You're listening to Were You Still Talking? All right, so welcome back. On the phone today, on the Skype today, I have Rob Walsh, who is the VP of Podcasting Relations with Libsyn, Liberated Syndication. It's the company I use to put my podcast up. Absolutely amazing that he's come on the show today. He is one of the one of the the experts on podcasting in the industry. He's the host of Podcast 411, Podcast Blog, uh, Today in iOS podcast. He co-hosts Libsyn's um, The Feed, which is one of the which is how I ran into him, how I know him. He offered to be on people's show on that podcast and uh, agreed to do it. So I'm quite amazed. He's also the co-author of a book about podcasting called Tricks Tricks of the Podcasting Masters and has been podcasting consultant for Governor Bill Richardson, Senator John Edwards, Dr. Mark Hyman, Tim Ferriss, one of the biggest podcasters in the industry, and several others. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Joel, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, uh, really great that you could be here, and um, your your promotion of the podcast industry, I think, is is fantastic. Um, even going because you anyone can listen to the feed; they don't have to be part of Lipson, and uh, I think it's awesome. Well, thank you. We try to make it for everybody, uh, not just, but we do give some information just for Lipson people. But for the majority of the content, we, we want to make it um, more generic. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. It it doesn't seem like you've got to just be, you know, using Libsyn to get a lot of info out of that show. Yeah, and Elsie does a great job um, producing that. So my co-host, um, she she's really the one that, that brings it all together. I I just show up every other Friday, and that's nice. <laughs> that's yes. a nice way yes. to do it. And that was my other question for you. Um, I'll kind of start with this: How many podcasts are you? currently doing besides being the the vp of customer relations um podcast relations how many podcasts do you do now well actively it's it's where i my own show is today in ios so that's mm-hmm. my main show that i do that it's supposed to be weekly it's it's down to like once or twice a month now um because podcasting has gotten so busy in my day job um and then every other week i do I co-host on the feed and then I produce every week uh, an episode of the uh, the eBay podcast called uh, eBay for business. So that's eBay's official podcast. So I help produce that one and get that launched. That, that actually is, is my weekly uh, podcast fix on editing and and cleaning up and and making and helping them get that going. Uh, And then I, I, have my son's podcast, Porter's podcast, which is kind of on hiatus, um, but we're trying to bring that back and get that going. Wow, that's quite a bit. But you're still doing like maybe one one a week around in there, plus your other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, plus some full time, at yeah. least one a week. Yeah. And you, another thing I just heard you say, which I'm impressed with, is that you still do the what I call the grunt work. You still do editing on your podcast and engineering and you're still responsible for all that. Yeah, if you stop doing that and you don't do that, then you don't understand what's out there. You don't know the tools that are out there and you can't help people that are new starting out to do that. So you really have, I feel, you know, my position, you really need to be in the weeds to know what the weeds look like (laughs) because they're changing. Everything's changing. New tools are coming out. So I, I always like to see which mic is good. As a matter of fact, I was going to use a different mic for today's interview, but uh, found out that um, uh, that mic that I was planning on using today, I couldn't get onto the stand for the mic stand. So I learned a little lesson there, which is okay. This mic has an issue if you're trying to mount it a certain way. Oh, so, that's that's good to know. Yeah, you never you don't know how mics work until you get one. I am. I did the typical studio owner thing and invested in a mic to do the podcast, even though I, you know, I've listened to enough of your, um, enough of your advice to know it's probably not going to get this investment back for quite a while. But I, I went out and bought an SM7B, um, even though my mics were okay, they worked just fine, but this is nice. Yeah. The, the mic I was trying to use today was a Thrawn Max and it really actually wasn't the mic. 
Well, it's partially the mic's fault. They they, they located the USB C connector and the, and the uh, headphone jack too close to the where you screw in to mount it on the bottom. That you have to ha- make sure that your your mounting screw it doesn't have any flanges on it because the flanges then cover up the holes. So I have to get a different mounting screw um, for it. So oh, interesting. Yeah, it's it's always the little things. It's always the smallest mm-hmm. things that make it not quite work. So you're going, you usually go straight into your computer and record. I, I normally do. Yeah, well, it depends on the mics that I'm using. But yes, um, that or I, I go into a Zoom H6. Uh, so this weekend, uh, me and my son were recording uh, about a half an hour from my podcast. We do, we're talking about Apple Arcade. And we said, you know, rather than trying to record upstairs in the studio where my studio is, I said, let's just go down where the, the Apple TV is and, and let's just take the Zoom H6 and a couple of Shure SMB 58, uh, 58s and plugged them into the H6. And we both had one. And then we just sat there and talked. And I tried to teach him all about good mic technique, about you can't turn your head away from the mic when you're talking to me. Um, you have to follow the mic. Your mic has to follow your mouth if you want to turn and look at it. So little things. But um, yeah, th- that, that worked out well. Um, I think we'll, we'll see once I'm done editing it. You'll find out. Well, that's, that's one of the fun right. things about podcasting is that we, you, we can do it anywhere. Um, the H6 right. is a great tool for that. And you don't have to buy a $400 mic like, um, silly engineers but, do when they get excited. Um, but you would need to buy a cloud lifter to drive that SM7B. Which I did. I did do that. Yeah. Cause I plugged it in and, and tried it out without that and it, it would work but it, it's very annoying barely yeah yeah it's yeah barely it's, can hear it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i have pro tools so i can turn the, it yeah, up yeah, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's not worth it it's the cloud lifter is a miracle it's a very nice device but um and and in actuality i'm a drummer it works amazing for an outside kick mic but that's a whole nother thing um without the cloud lifter don't need a cloud lifter for that one uh so the other, um, oh, the other thing I was interested in, we kind of started to touch on this. Well, a couple things. I heard you talk about the eBay podcast on another podcast that I just listened to. I forgot the name of it, but you were just on. Um, and uh, I didn't realize you were the host of it. So how I'm long has that host. been going? I am not the host. I'm not the host. Oh, I oh am okay. Producer. Oh, yeah, you're the no, producer. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I'm the producer. They, they, eBay does it the right way eBay, their hosts and co-hosts on the show are all people that work at eBay and have been at eBay for, for years and are experts. So they, they're people inside the organization. Uh, Griff and Alan uh, both are, are their main co-hosts and um, have been there. Griff has been there. He was like employee, one of the top ten, first original 10 or 15 employees. So uh, he really knows eBay. Um, and, uh, they can really talk about it. And that's really what I say for any branded podcast. I mean, one of the biggest mistakes branded podcast makes, um, branded podcasts make out there in, in the world is they hire a third party who are, are then their hosts. Like Gimlet did that, you know, Gimlet does that people go out and hire Gimlet to be their production company for their podcast. And then Gimlet uses some of their own people and, and those branded podcasts are horrible. <laughs> right. I mean, it's right. Just, it's just bad. I mean, because they don't know the product. You, it doesn't matter if the person knows how to speak right. It doesn't matter that they're using fifteen hundred dollar mics. It doesn't matter that it's been scripted by fifteen people. Those fifteen people don't know the product, so you can't make a branded, a good branded podcast through a third party. Um, you can use a third party to edit and produce, and that's what we do. Mm-hmm. What I do with eBay, but I don't have any say in the content at all. Um, because I don't know. I'm not, that's not my field of expertise. That's not your but field. Can, yeah. Right. Right. But I can D10 and, um, and improve the audio quality of it. But that, that's really where any branded company that's looking to get into podcasting should look at finding someone internally to be the voice, the, the host and the co host and the voice of their show. Uh, you know, that Trader Joe's podcast does that and they do it very well. Um, Schmied has a podcast, uh, same thing. Uh, you know, whenever you have a branded podcast, the best ones out there are the ones that are hosted or co-hosted by someone that's in the company that knows the product and knows the industry. That can, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what doesn't make sense to me is what podcasts do well and don't do well. Um, just as I was inspired to podcast by 
Kevin Smith on the Joe Rogan show, they were, they were talking for three hours and they said, oh, anyone can do this. And I went, oh, really? Anyone? Uh, and at the time I was having some issues, couldn't play drums. I thought, well, I'll use all this equipment, plug in some, uh, plug it in, see how it works. Can anyone really do a podcast? And the answer, well, the answer is sort of. Was, well, here's the answer. Anyone can. The, the other question is not that anyone should. Right? Not everyone should. Anyone can, but not everyone should. Um, it's, it's just like anyone can paint. Exactly. But, you know. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. And I, um, because I live in Oregon, it seems to be a common thing here. I do have the gift of gab, and I know how to talk into a microphone. Uh, I'm an, uh, an actor, and so even though I... I run into a lot of actors who don't seem to know how to talk into a microphone, which is really surprising to me. But it, it came very natural for me to just jump in and, and try it. And it, I've had a lot of enthusiasm. I can't say I have a lot of listeners, but we'll get there. Um, I did want to kind of touch on, I, th I think the um, podcasting is a fascinating medium. And it's fascinating to me how long you've been doing it. And I was, I really was wondering, like, what did it look like in 2004 when you started podcasting? It was you, Joe Rogan, and Kevin Smith? Uh, Joe and Kevin weren't podcasting then. Oh, no. I thought they were. I thought they'd been doing it <laughs> no, almost that long. No, 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 no. Joe, <laughs> Joe started the end of 2009. Um, oh, he's a newbie. So, yeah. yeah. So Joe started in the 2009. He's been hosting with us since 2010. Uh, and Kevin Smith, wasn't doing it originally then i think kevin came in around 2006 maybe 2007 um but he wasn't there at the, in the in, in the very beginning was some of the early earliest comedian podcasts joe um jimmy pardo was one of the first um comedy podcasts mm -hmm. um Ke keith malley and keith and the girl those are some of your earliest comedians that were were podcasting um so there were Definitely comedians that were got into it early, uh, you know, in the, before Apple launched um, Apple Podcasts. And, you know, I always look at it, it or an Apple Podcast, but podcast support in iTunes. So that was oh, June, right. the end of June 2005. So if you look at those people that were podcasting before June, you know, June 29th, 2005, before Apple, you know, launched support for podcasts, those are the really the early people because it was insane. Um, to be podcasting in those early days because no one really it was really hard for anyone to get a podcast apple really brought it mainstream once itunes supported podcasting in 2005 um, and, and that's you know why at the end of 2005 podcast was considered was was the picked as the word word of the year was podcast and that all had to do with apple supporting podcast but prior to that you know there weren't many comedic podcasts and I mean, there were some comedy podcasts, but there weren't many comedians doing it. So they were mostly in, information podcasts, informative, uh, niche type things. There, there were everything. I mean, there was there, mm -hmm. there, there were music podcasts, there were tech podcasts, there were history podcasts, um, but there just wasn't a lot of them. Um, and, and there wasn't too many people like you know, uh, like Mark Marin, you know, doing WTF with Mark Marin. There weren't podcasts where you had real true uh, comedians, Joe Rogan, coming in and interviewing other people. That didn't come until a couple of years later. Yeah, and his, er his earlier podcast, he <laughs> it seemed like he was mainly um, interviewing other people and doing crazy things. Uh, it, 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 it's interesting if you go way back and look at early podcasts. There's a couple available. But how, for you yourself, how did you even know about podcasting in 2004? And what was your first experience? I mean, did you have to, I assume you had to be a real techie to, to do it? Yeah, well, I, I was looking for a hobby and I read an article on, it was, I remember it was October 6th, 2004, October 6th, 2004, I was in Engadget and said, if you want to podcast all you have to do is add this enclosure tag to your rss feed and you're podcasting and, and i immediately thought what's an enclosure tag and what's an rss feed right um and then, and then i spent time over the next month or so figuring that out and because there was no tutorials there was zero tutorials on how to podcast 
I mean, that was the tutorial. That literally was the only tutorial out there was Engadget just saying, yeah, just enclose your tag to your RSS feed. And that was how helpful it was. Uh, so I started a website called Podcast 411 and the podcast for it um, to teach other people how to podcast. Um, uh, unbeknownst at the same time, uh, it was a company was launching called Libsyn. And they were trying to make it easy for podcast people to podcast. And they launched in November um, 5th, November 5th, 2004. So Libsyn will be 15 years old on uh, November 5th. And I started using Libsyn. I found out about them right away. Um, I started using them in March of 2005. And I've been with them ever since. And I, I've been working for them since uh, August of 2007. Oh, wow. But, okay. Yeah. But my first but... podcast was about how to podcast. And it was about interviewing podcasters. So I had the first podcast about podcasts where I interviewed podcasters. It was basically inside the actor's studio for podcasting. Oh, right. And, and, and I learned a lot about podcasting from other podcasters. And, and then podcasters learned a lot about how to podcast from the podcasters I had on that show. So uh, it, was a, it was a fun show to do. I got to interview some really great people in, in the early days. It's kind of, I call it on hiatus. I'm just too busy to, to work on. But I, I've interviewed a lot of the biggest names. I've had Dan Carlin on there. I had Ronald Moore. Um, executive producer of then Battlestar Galactica, now the new producer of the show. Um, uh, that's the one, the new uh, one on Apple TV about uh, the the space race um, for men or something like that, or for all men. Uh, but uh, uh, for all mankind, I think is what the show's called. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, I got to have him on because he was doing a podcast, and I interviewed him back in 2006. So he was doing the podcast in 2005. Um, it was a branded podcast for Battlestar Galactica and the Sci-Fi Channel that each week he would just talk about each episode of Battlestar Galactica. And it was great. He had great podcasts. It was one of the early big branded podcasts. Uh, I know a lot of people don't realize this, but people have been doing branded podcasts and promoting books and, and other things for all, since podcasting started. <laughs> um, podcast has always been a really good tool for people to promote the TV shows and movies and, and books and, and their own personal brand and people have been doing that and big names have been doing that um, since the early days yeah that's really interesting um that it's been going on that long because i think most people don't quite even like myself don't quite realize that i just heard about podcasting a couple of years ago i'm sure i i heard a, about podcasts for a while before i finally was um encouraged and encouraged to listen to s-town which kind of blew me away and then I had actually some medical issues that made it hard for me to read. So I started listening to podcasts and stumbled on Joe Rogan's show. And um, luckily for me, the first shows I heard with him were just amazing guests. Not that, I, I mean, he has a lot of amazing guests, but uh, it was this guy called the Iceman, who's all about changing your life. And it was, uh, uh, well, Kevin Smith and some other people who who, where the shows were... I don't know, they were incredibly powerful, like really inspirational. And it made me realize how powerful podcasting can be. And, and you know, his show being so big, it's like he really seems to make a change in, in, in he was really inspiring. It's a very inspiring mm -hmm. show. And um, it is everywhere now. Like every, every, I'm starting to read audiobooks and, the advice there is start a podcast and talk about your books or, you know, a way to promote this, oh, yeah. you know, everything. Well, it's, it's a great promotional vehicle because there's more time in a day to listen to audio than do anything else. And when people realize that, they realize that they can branch out. If you have a blog, you should have a podcast. Um, and the number of podcasts is very small. Uh, they say there's 750,000 podcasts and Apple podcasts, only 250,000 of them less than that are active. Um, and that number 250,000 active podcasts is a lot smaller than the 600 million blogs that are out there. So, it, you know, ratio wise, it's over a thousand and closer to 2000 to one um, bloggers to podcasters. So you want to stand out podcast. This is a, been very encouraging for me to hear those kind of numbers because I heard those in when I first started it, and it was, um, it's one of the things that made me think, oh yeah, this is it really is a new medium because that's not very many, especially if you compare it to like videos on YouTube or something like that. It's still a very small medium, and I heard 
I think it was you, also talk about how many podcasts start and just don't keep going after 10 episodes or so. Um, oh, yeah. There's a it, ton of dead, dead podcasts, a ton of them. Um, you know, they, they just, they do one episode and they go, Hey, is this mic working? And the second episode is okay. All right. We got it. Everything's working. We checked it. And now the next episode, we're going to be back with actual content. And then they just never another episode. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I'm laughing because that's my first three episodes right there. That, that describes my episodes almost to a T. Um, my first episode was me going, can I podcast? And I think that my second episode was, well, now I'm my, everything's plugged in because my, my setup is ridiculous because I'm an audio engineer and I have a board and I have Pro Tools, you know, stuff you don't need to do to podcast, but I, I like to sound good. I'm trying to sound good. Um, anyhow, so that was my first two. And then I had a, um, a friend of mine call and I said, well, let's do a trial podcast. Let's pretend this is a podcast. And, uh. I wanted to just put it out just like that, but he was worried about certain things that were said, so we he edited it because he's also an audio engineer. And so the next two were just us BSing on the phone and talking about whatever. Um, but, you know, it's encouraging to me that I kept going. I kept doing it. I realized that, uh, immediately realized from that phone call that getting someone to talk to you is so much more exciting, at least when you're doing what I'm doing, which is more of a informative podcast. I really, I'm starting to think that what people, because, because, um, as you've said before, the length of podcasts seems to be pretty long, like long form seems to be the way podcasts are, are going. And, uh, people seem to just want to listen to two people talk for a long time, which is kind of interesting to me, but yeah. And the, so I've just started getting all kinds of different people in from uh, someone who hiked the Pacific Crest Trail to uh, someone who's doing a documentary on harpsichords um, and, you know, all kinds of different people that I realize I know and they would make a very interesting podcast. And I always tell anyone, the most important thing is when you're doing a podcast is just make it interesting for you. If you are interested in your own show, if you can listen to your show, then there'll be other people that have similar interests uh, as you. And, and that will be successful. Um, you know, the ones that fail are the ones that try to figure out what other people want rather than what they want. Uh, and, and I see that all the time when people ask me, what do you think about this? I think this would be successful. I'm like, well, would you want to listen to that? Well, I think it would be successful. I'm like, mm, that's not the quest- answer to the question I asked. <laughs> uh, the question was, would you want to listen to it? And if the answer is no, then don't do that. Um, do the show you want to listen to. Oh, then my show should be huge because I love it. The only thing I don't like about there you my go. yeah, <laughs> the only thing I don't like about my show is when I hear my voice. But I'm learning that too. The the less I hear my voice, sort of the better it feels to me. You know, the more. I'm getting the, the guest to, to speak, the more it tends to come out well. well. One thing I can say, Universe, over the years, almost all podcasters said, oh, I don't like my voice. I'm like, well, why are you asking other people to listen to it? Um, right. No. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm fine with my voice. I always say to people, have you ever, t- when you're talking to someone on the phone, did they ever dr- heal over and die, die from your voice? No? Well, then your voice is fine. Gilbert Godfrey has a podcast. If oh, he can do it, anybody can do it. That's a really good example. You can't get a better example than that. Not right. at all. Yeah. Wow. People will listen to anything. And it is interesting. Content, because, right. Yeah. I, I interview a lot of actors and they almost all say, I don't like my voice. And I've seen a lot of people say that's why they don't watch their their films is that they don't want to see themselves on screen, which I totally relate to. It's It's a bizarre thing. No. Yeah, well, some people like to see pictures of themselves all over the place, right? Yeah. Including congresswomen. Um, but, right. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, heard, heard about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the, the point the point is, your voice is fine. It's going to sound different to you when you hear it back than what you think your voice is, but your voice will be fine. And, and just be comfortable with it and pick a good mic in a quiet room. And unfortunately today I'm, I'm using Apple AirPods. So I apologize folks because the mic 
I was planning on using. Again, I had technical issues. Um, uh, uh, I, I just moved. I have a new studio or new office set up, and this was going to be my first interview out of my new office. Um, that is my first interview out of the new office. So it's going to be my first one with the new microphone that I have in the office. Um, so. Oh, that's we'll get that. great. Well, I mean, I'm sorry it didn't work out, but I feel privileged that I'm the first interview in the new office. It's, mo- it for is. most of my guests, I'm the first interview ever, <laughs> which is fun. But you have, uh, you must have done thousands of podcast episodes now. Um, you ever yeah, count? Yeah, I mean, that, that, uh, I spent a lot. I mean, I've got... um. Today in iOS, I've got 487 episodes up. Uh, I've got 240 episodes of Podcast 411, um, 160, I think, or so of, um, uh, of the feed. And then um, I, uh, various other shows I've had along the line. And, and then all the ones I've produced and, and helped uh, release. Yeah, it's well over 1,000 shows that i've been involved episodes i've been involved in probably closer to 2000 you have been involved yeah an amazing amount of shows and one of the people that you said you consulted on was tim ferris he wasn't yeah, he the number one podcast. you helped him launch it oh, okay that's amazing yeah, yeah. and then I, produ- I did production work for him early on and then i fired myself you fired yourself <laughs> okay <laughs> Well, I just, I, well, I was just like, you're, you're paying. I'm like, you're paying me way too much money to to edit your show. I'm like, yeah, why don't you find someone that's cheaper? I, you know, I helped you launch it. That was really what he wanted. It was help with the launch, right? Um, right. And, and I'm like, you really don't need me for this point forward for what he was looking to do. Um, uh, and and so, uh, he, you know, he found another producer, and and, I, and and that was good. But he still every now and then will call me and ask me some advice, or we'll talk. Um, yeah, you know, I, I still remember one time he was he was getting probably somewhere eight or nine times more downloads per episode than I was getting from my show, and I get a phone call from him. He's like, "How do I grow my show?" Like, oh, oh my god, greedy, <laughs> greedy, greedy! All right, oh my yeah, that that is surprising, and it's it's uh it's it's nice to know. It's another encouraging yeah. fact that even one of the biggest podcasters out there is still wondering how he grows his show. Um, I've heard you give some really good advice on different podcasts about um, ways that don't work on growing a show and ways that, you know, basically having a good show, I think, is is your main uh, advice, right? Well, yeah, and my advice to him, I remember on that call was, well, you know, you've had guests in there on New Age and Psychodrop and Trugs and this and that. I go... Uh, and you've had friends. And I go, do you have any make big celebrities that you're, you know, you can get on the show? And he's like, oh, I can get Governor Schwarzenegger. I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that might um, be a good idea. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yes. So that was one of the, you know, that that one, and then the, his interview with Glenn Beck. Those two really propelled the show and really helped the show take off. So between those two, both got a lot of pl- press and a lot of PR and a lot of coverage and a lot of um, promotion from Apple. And th- those two interviews really de- definitely helped um, propel his show to the next level because he had stagnated at a certain level, which for most people was a really like, wow, that's great. But right. he wanted it greater. Right. And, and, and he got there um, from that and then and, and, and was able to take it to that next level to t- take it up to a tier one. You know, he's a top tier podcast for sure. And, and Tim is a really, really smart guy, really intelligent guy. He's a lot. He brings to the table when he's doing the interviews. And that's, and his life experiences, you know, those are things you can't duplicate that he has. The same with Joe Rogan. You know, the reason that Joe Rogan is the number one podcast out there overall is Joe has life experiences and, and a comedic timing and, and, and that just you can't duplicate that. And he and on, on top of that, both him and Tim did one thing that a lot of these other people that come into the space don't do. They really said, this is my main thing. This is going to be my main thing. Everything else I'm going to do is going to come around the podcast. Other people try to get into podcasting and make it part of their thing or kind of a thing. And then they wonder why it doesn't take off. Well, it didn't take off immediately for Joe Rogan and, and, and Tim Ferriss. They weren't you know, the levels they're at now. It took them some time to get there. And it was only after they dedicated themselves and really, really put themselves fully into it and said, this is my main thing that their show's we're able to get to the level they're at today. 
And, that, you know, they, they were not overnight successes. People think, oh, they're going to start, and there's, there's some magic silver bullet these guys did to get them there. No, they did a lot of hard work, and they're very talented people. And, and those are things that are people you can't easily replicate, and not quickly, for sure. That makes a lot of sense, and that's another thing that I think is uh, should be encouraging for people. It may be discouraging for some people if they don't want to work, but uh, a couple of things also about Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan is they're, I mean, yeah, they're massively hardworking people. They have a ton of life experience. Uh, Tim Ferriss had two best-selling books. Joe Rogan was the announcer for one of the biggest reality shows on television, I guess you would call it. Um, uh, you know, and they had some history behind them and they still weren't satisfied with their, you know, they still weren't satisfied until they worked really hard on the podcast to make it better and better and better. I mean, yeah, Tim Ferriss started out with, for one, he has a massive mailing list and a, a lot of tools to get the word out. So it's interesting that it still wasn't enough, you know, and, until he got to his, he still wanted to make it bigger and bigger. It It shouldn't be surprising to me because he seems a little driven. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. And, and, and Rogan as well. I mean, yeah, people don't realize the Renaissance man that Joe Rogan is. He just not, he wasn't just an announcer for fear factor and uh, but he also did the announcing for MMA. But before that, at one point in time, he was a Taekwondo champion in the United States. And then he became a stand up comedian and he was on um, talk radio with, with Phil Hartman. Um, and so Joe has had some very unique life experiences, very, and, very much a renaissance man and then now he's into bow hunting or you know so he gets into something he really gets into it um and and he did that with podcasts he said you know i'm gonna get into this and and he did and he took over and he he doesn't over promote himself he doesn't go and do takeover episodes he doesn't do any of these gimmicky things that people talk about here's how you grow your show you know, right you know, he just creates content and lets it take care of itself yeah, that's a really good point. He doesn't, um, I mean, at one point, I think he even stopped doing interviews, but that was because he was, I think he needed all the time for his own show. And he he doesn't just, it's interesting because I think he could have just people who are huge celebrities and that would bring in a massive audience, but he doesn't. He he gets guests that are very interesting, that are interesting to him. And, you know, whatever walk of life they're coming from, whether they're, um, soldiers or their MMA people, or they are, you know, producers. I mean, he just had, um, oh geez, now I'm forgetting his name. He just had one of the biggest producers in Hollywood on the show, which I was totally shocked about, Brian Grazer. And I was blown away by that because of course, who doesn't want to listen to Brian Grazer talk if they're into movies at all, if they have any idea who he is. And the funny part was another thing that shows how, how much room, how much potential there is with podcasts. Brian barely knew who Joe was. <laughs> he, he was like finding out on the show. Oh, you. Oh, I see. Joe Rogan. But then he he also had Bernie Sanders on. He also had Snowden on recently. So uh, he had Snowden on last week. Um, oh yeah, I watched and, that too. That was interesting. All right. So yeah, he gets a very wide range of guests, from comedians to movie producers to some of the most controversial figures uh, with Snowden and, and then, you know, top, you know, people running for president and, you know, Joe, I'm sure we'll have whoever winds up being the two candidates will probably wind up having both or maybe at least one of them uh, for sure on his show. Um, he's already had Bernie. There's a chance Bernie will be the candidate, but it, it, it's, his is a place that you get to go to. And I, I, I remember, um, Bernie in the interviews, uh, Sanders said that he liked the fact that he wasn't, you know, a short, it wasn't a short time. He got to be on there for a whole hour and talk for an hour, um, which in, you don't usually get that opportunity to hear a candidate be interviewed for that long a period of time. It, yeah, exactly. And that's what his, I mean, I'm one of his watchers. That's something I really appreciated about it. Um, I wanted to hear Bernie talk for an hour. I know not everyone does, but I sure did. And I, I think it's one of Bernie's, um, and a lot of candidates, not just him, it's one of their big problems, is that if you can't talk in a 30-second soundbite, it's very difficult to, to reach people. So, I, yeah, it was great that he had him on. He's had other candidates on, too, and let them talk. And um, 
Yeah, it's, he, it's he had he had Gary he had Gary Johnson on back before the last during the last, previous election. He had Gary on, I think, twice, um, and, and got to talk. Yeah, it it's really helpful. Um, I might get to my list of questions now. I did write down a list of questions, which I don't do with with every guest. Um, oh, one of my questions was about Joe Rogan. We've kind of talked a lot about his show. Um, do you like the new iPhone? You're an expert. I'm going to ask an expert. Uh, uh, the new iPhone is nice. I don't. I did not get this round. I'm going to get next year's. Um, I didn't see it. I have an iPhone XS Max. Oh, okay. And if you have an iPhone XS Max, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's really not worth the update. Um, if you have an iPhone 10, the the 10 the 10 the 11 Pro Max is kind of worth the update. Anything earlier than the 10, absolutely worth the update. So if you have an iPhone 8 or, or earlier, yeah, then then the 11 and Pro and the 11 Pro Max are definitely worth upgrading to if if you can afford them. They are expensive. They, they are not yeah. cheap. Um, the iPhone 11 is is a much more reasonable price device and is a very good device, and you can barely notice the difference in the screen. But um, it really comes down to if you have the money and you and you do a lot of photography, then the iPhone 11 Pro Max has um, is probably the way you want to go, or at least 11 Pro, um, since they both have the same cameras. Uh, they, they are both very nice devices. I, I play with them. It makes me go think, rethink. Oh, maybe I should have upgraded this year, but I, I'm going to hold off for next year. Um, much to my children's chagrin, they were hoping I was going to upgrade so they could get my phone. Um, but I, I just, at the end of the day, I couldn't, I really couldn't justify the $1,500 price increase from, um, you know, in one year. Next year, it'll make more sense. Yeah, I'm always a late adopter. Um, I still have an 8 Plus. The, I would upgrade except for the price. The price is the big barrier because I would I would want to get the the one with the camera. That would be that's the main reason to upgrade to get a nicer camera. That's always always what I like. And, and it it does a really good job shooting at night now. And but the, so does the eleven. So the, any of the elevens do a better job, um, a, a good job shooting at night. I shouldn't say better because up until now, no iPhone has done a good job of, of shooting at night. Night photos on on any iphone throughout the history of the iphones have pretty much sucked right, right um and 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 the 11 series brings it up to par now with what you can get on on some of the top line android devices yeah and what what is the um you i mean you have a show all about the iphone what what's the advantage of an iphone over android devices or google phones or are they all pretty comparable? They're not. This, um, people will try to, to tell you they're comparable, but the reality is what they will often do is they compare a feature from one Android phone and then a feature from a second Android phone and a feature from a third Android phone. And they go, well, the iPhone can't do all that. Well, neither can the Android device. You're comparing that this feature from this phone and this and that. When, when you take the iPhone and compare it head-to-head to any Android device and, and head-to-head of the WAN, um, it might not win on every individual spec, but overall, it'll, it'll win. And, and performance, processor-wise, it's their worlds ahead. I mean, their generation ahead on on, on speed. And, and then it just works. It really does. It it really just works. Uh, it does everything you want to do. It is a it is a better UI. Um, at the end of the day, the software really is better than Android. Android is a mishmash. Nobody ever updates on the Android side. Malware is a really a major issue on Android. Uh, you, you can't trust apps um, for the most part. iOS things are secure. Your privacy matters. You're not the you're not the product. Unfortunately, with Android, you get an Android phone. You are the product. You you can give up any hopes or semblance of privacy because that just ain't happening. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Well, I'm glad. Okay, folks, you've heard it from an expert because I've been a Mac addict for a long time and. Um, People always complain about the prices. They can, they like, why would you get an iPhone over this? Blah, blah, blah. For me, every time I go from, people ask me, can you help me with this? I, I get that a lot because I've done IT work at different places. And so 
Every time I go from an iPhone and try to help somebody with their Android, I just think, what is this? What, how is this mm-hmm. supposed to work? <laughs> That's always been my thing. Uh, to me, the, the iPhone is completely user-friendly. It makes sense. And, and you look at the consumption of podcasts as a perfect example. The ratio of podcast consumption is, is four to one iOS to Android overall. So four times more podcasts get consumed on iOS iPhones than get consumed on Android devices. Uh, and, and, and there's five times more Android devices out there. So the typical iPhone consumes 20 times more podcasts than the typical Android phone. And, and that's just because people that get iPhones, they, they want a better media experience. They, they, they don't want just a phone. A lot of people that buy Android devices, not all, but a lot, that buy Android devices, they just wanted a flip phone to replace their old one, they, which they can't get. So they just got the what they were handed in, in the store. Um, but when people buy an iPhone, they're buying a multimedia device. They're buying something to do more than a phone call. And, and, and that's where Apple really exceed, excels and does well. It's the ecosystem. They talk about it. The ecosystem, the AirPods. Uh, the AirPods I'm wearing right now, uh, they're really good. Actually, Apple just announced AirPods Pros today. Uh, available on the 30th so i'll be buying those on the 30th and talking about them so there's new airpods coming out oh that's that's pretty exciting that's fun yeah that makes even the even the um earbuds that they ship with the phone i noticed a huge difference in every each phone i bought the the quality is getting better and i'm still as a someone who's an odd works with audio and studies audio i still don't understand how they get the kind of sound out of those ear ear pods as they do they do a good job yeah uh, apple does a good job yes things are a little bit more but they last longer uh you know apple products do last longer uh, in the shelf life and you can actually and they support apple supports their products longer with up, software updates than anyone else well that's true i just upgraded my a computer after 13 years and the only reason i upgraded is because the 13 year old computer was one processor behind um, actual 64-bit, so it wouldn't, it couldn't do the new uh, operating systems yeah. because yeah. they finally upgraded to real 64-bit operating, not only on on their operating and on Pro Tools. Pro Tools the same thing. So I finally had to bite the bullet, and you know, two years later I did, and uh, but the computer is absolutely fine. The as far as how it works, it's still fine. Oh yeah, I've got a few computers around in my house that still are fine. I just haven't. I just I've upgraded and moved on. Right. Um, yeah. Now the laptop you know, that we had that we dropped and broke the screen that doesn't work as well. Yeah. But it does work. It, <laughs> just a little, it just has a, has a Picasso feel to it. it. Exactly. Well, you just plug it into a monitor. It runs. It's the same problem, though, that not only is the operating system old, but the amount of uh, storage and RAM is what, you know, it's teeny. It's teeny tiny. Um, so one thing I'm curious about, and I think you've answered this on other podcasts, so I ha- I'm sorry I'm repeating questions. Does any type of advertising actually work on podcasts? Or, or I mean, is it... Is it also a matter of getting to a certain level first and then maybe using advertising or, you know? Yeah, you know, what you don't want to do is try to be advertising um, when you have 23 downloads an episode. You know, I, I had someone right. email me saying, hey, I, I want advertising. I'm, you know, I, we got 20 downloads an episode. I'm like, it, this isn't the time. <laughs> Grow your audience. Um, most of the advertisers we work with look for 5,000. You know, and get to 5,000, advertising starts to make some sense. It makes sense for you, it makes sense for the advertiser, it makes sense for everybody. But when you try to advertise and get money too early in, in the show, unless your show is really niche, I mean, if your show is about chameleon breeding, sure, 800 downloads an episode, you can make a lot of money as a chameleon breeder podcast. There's a beekeeping podcast, you know, it's getting 1,500, 3,000 downloads an episode that are making good money, but they're in a very niche product. Um, if you're a more general interview podcast, comedy podcast, history podcast, you need a larger audience. You need at least 5,000 to really, for it to make sense. 
Uh, people don't want to hear that. They want to hear, oh, I can make money off of any level. Well, yes, but if you start getting advertising too soon before you grow your audience, then you, you, you're going to alienate certain people. And, and, and early on, your, your goals should be all about growth and, and building audience. Um, too many people, too many get into this thinking from day one, they're going to make money. And, and most people never make money podcasting. And, and that's okay, because a lot of people do it for a hobby, do it for fun. My dad doesn't make money golfing, but he sure loves doing it every week. Um, and podcasting can be that hobby. It can be that place where you have fun and better yourself and just you know ha have something that you really like and are passionate about. That is a really good analogy that your dad doesn't make money golfing. Not many people do. Um, and it, yeah, for me, it's been an a, amazing experience. I mean, I've met a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people that I knew that I never knew very well, you know, that I never got, got to, uh, get into and, uh, also talk to people that I didn't know at all and found out about, uh, hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, which is ab absolutely a phenomenal thing. I don't know if you know about that, but people hike, it's almost 3000 miles from Mexico to Canada, um, every year, thousands of people do it. And, um, it, it was really something. Rob's got to go, so we're going to wrap it up a little sooner than I usually do, which is perfect because my last couple podcasts have gone on really long, but people still seem to listen. So um, this has been Were You Still Talking? with Joel Albrecht and my guest today, Rob Walsh. Thank you so much for coming on. It was really awesome of you to do that. Joel, thank you so much for having me on the show. And if anyone wants to learn more about podcasting, reach out to me. I make myself pretty uh, um, re uh, approachable. Just email me, Rob, as in Robert, R-O-B, at Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Happy to answer any questions you have about podcasting. Um, or you can check out my other podcast today in iOS uh, and, and learn about, more about the iPhone and the iPad. All right. Thanks a lot. And you really do make yourself accessible, which for someone in your position is pretty amazing. So, yeah, thanks for all your hard work. Thank you for hosting with us and, and you know, best of luck and uh, continued uh, success with the show. Well, thank you very much. I'll keep doing it for a while. All right. So be good to each other.